Hi, this is Daniel Shanahan from New Leaf Data, and today on FileMaker Inventory Resources, we're going to take a look at units of measure. Inventory items have a quantity, and we've discussed types of quantity before, what you have on hand, allocated, what's available. But they also have a unit of measure, and those are how what, what is the unit in which you're selling it, usually. Now, it, it can happen that when you are working with inventory, when it's coming and going throughout the system, the unit of measure can change. And so the question becomes how do you how do you change the unit of measure without with keeping the quantity um, accurate? Let's take a look at our demo model. I'm looking at the item layout here and I have some quantities over here and I have our item and then down below I have two unit of measure fields. Now you might already be tracking unit of measure and if that's the case you probably have at least one field. I have two on here because in this demonstration what I want to do is in this scenario, this made up scenario, I'm going to say that we sell in a particular unit of measure and since we sell in that unit of measure we're going to count in that unit of measure but when we buy from our vendor, the vendor sometimes we'll have a different unit of measure. So we need to have some kind of conversion. And that's what this demonstration will show. You could see that for some of these items, uh, like the blue widget, the unit of measure is the same. So we still want to mark that. But in others, we want uh, there's a change. And so we need to have a place where we can mark the differences. In order to do this conversion, we need to have some kind of reference table that's that is going to do the calculation for us. And in this particular table we have various units of measure. So you could see when I'm here uh, for the blue widget I'm going to go from kilogram to kilogram. Well there's no change there so a kilogram to kilogram will uh, be a multiplier of one which is essentially to say it's the same thing. But down here, we're going to go from kilogram to pound. And so in our scripting, what we'll do is we'll first look for kilogr uh, kilogram. Uh, let me just find that. So here's our kilogram. And then the next part of the scripting will be to find pound, and then this will be the multiplier here. We're going to have to reverse that as well, coming back in, and we'll show that. I'll show that. So uh, let me find all. Then the next thing we'll have to do is go from pound to kilogram, which is this record here. And then that's our multiplier. It's important to note that in this demo, anyways, the, the unit of measure, when we purchase a unit of measure and we use a unit of measure, it's all the same type. So a weight is always a weight. Uh, a length is always a length. And so your situation may vary. Uh, this is pretty normal, but um, but if you have something where you're going from uh, uh, maybe weight to volume, then, uh, then you'll need to um, figure out that translation. So the first part is to have this uh, conversion table and to fill it out with, with data. Let's take a look at an order. I'll create a new order here and we'll do our blue widgets. So I'll order 10 blue widgets. Let's do a red widget. What we have here is uh, a separate line on the on the purchase order line. And so for us, since we're keeping this in kilo kilograms, we know that we want to order 10 kilograms uh, or let's say the red widget. The red widget, we want to order 150 kilograms, but our our supplier or our vendor needs to see that in pounds. And so 
here's here's what the supplier will see in pounds. Now, um, I'm, I'm not sure the supplier is going to give you 330.6937 pounds. So there's even another step of conversion you might have to do to make that an even number or a 0.5 or something like that. But for the sake of the demonstration, this will be this will be sufficient. What I want to point out is that there's a bit of a conversion. So we have something here. It has to be converted. Let me do it this way. We have something here that we use. It has to be converted into the supplier's language. So we send it to the supplier in a converted language, if you will. And then when we receive it, it has to go back into our language. So it's kind of like translating languages back and forth. And so that's what we'll see. Here on the purchase order, we're looking at both languages, both units of measure. When I send this, I'll create this uh, to the supplier. I'll create a document. And here's our, our purchase order that we're going to send off to the supplier. And you can see that the supplier only sees their unit of measure. They don't care what our unit of measure is, presumably. And so we've done this translation here. So while we're looking at both, the supplier only needs to see their unit of measure. That gets sent off to the supplier. Uh, let's go over to the receipts. I'll create a new receipt. And now I'm going to receive that purchase order. And you can see that in the translation. The translation's a little rough right now, so we received one extra kilogram. But I want to post that receipt. And so that's complete. We're not pending anything. And I, I could go over to my item, and on the blue widget, er, blue widget was 110. Our red widget, uh, because of that extra, that extra one, it gives us a negative number. That gives us an example of a unit of measure both where the units are the same and where the units are different. Now there's another scenario in the units of measure, and that's when you, you, sell, you sell your item in each, but you buy it by the case. But the case doesn't have any, any meaning to it in and of itself. A liter has meaning to it in and of itself. The US pound has meaning to it. It has a number to it, a dozen. You could buy, you could sell eggs one at a time or by the dozen. Well, the dozen, by definition, is, is 12 eggs. But a case doesn't have any meaning to it. So if we had two items or more that we sold by each, but we purchased by the case, if the case is a different quantity, we're going to be in trouble because that uh, that conversion table, let's bring that up again. Uh, where am I here? Let's see, that conversion table. Let's just make one here. Each case, if we just had each and case, let's see, this was 16. Each case, and this one was 24. When we run through the script and we say, I'm on each and I need to find case, it's going to find these two documents, these two records. Now we have a problem because we don't know which one it, it's referring to. So let's get rid of these. For that purpose, I've defined case differently. So if there's 16 in a case, I put parentheses 16, and 24 in a case, I put 24. So while we have a purple what's it and a turquoise what's it, both are sold each, both are purchased by the case, but the case is different. And so in that unit of measure, I've defined it within the unit of measure, uh, within the unit of measure itself.
So let's take a, a look at orders in that sense. If I want 32, I, I know that I'm going to order two cases. And uh, let's see, if I do 120, that'll be five cases. So I send that off to the vendor. Again, the vendor is translated. So this is the, the vendor only wants to see how many cases I want. And uh, let me mark back order. We did back order. I did back order in a previous video, and it's also another article. And so it, it ties in here. And I'll create a new receipt for that, a purchase order receipt. And I can mark that I've received uh, two of those cases and three of those cases, and I can post that. And you can see that we are now complete on the cases, and then I have two pending cases. And when I go back over to the receipt, uh, I'm doing the same thing. Let's just take a look at that. We have both units of measure, but this time, but they're flipped. So on the receipt, on the on the order, we have the unit that we deal with and the unit that our supplier deals with, and then we're flipping that on the receipt because presumably, that when something comes in and we're receiving an item. We're going to get some kind of documentation. We're going to get a shipping list. Uh, so that's going to be in the supplier's language. And so on the receipt and what we're receiving is in the supplier's unit of measure. Okay. So that's so it's flipped on there. Uh, OK, so that's probably clear enough. Let me go into take another uh, just to finish this one off. At another time, they sent those last two cases. We could say, OK, and now we're complete on that. So that's one way of handling different units of measure for your items. There's an article about this on FileMakerInventoryResources.com. And there's a download file there as well. And you can download that. It's, it's uh, uh, completely open. So break it open, reverse engineer it. Uh, change things, add things, do what you like. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button down below. Also subscribe and more videos are on the way so you'll be notified. Go over to FileMakerInventoryResources.com. There's plenty of articles there, several download files, and you can sign up to be notified when new articles or files are loaded. If you have any comments, please list those below as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.